Hello, gentle viewers. This is Av Guardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 25 with the Silver Wolves of Charlotte. <laughs> um, yeah, we are in our second proper season of this franchise. To say that our first year went poorly is, I think, an understatement. But we're in prime position to perhaps make an improvement on that in this episode. Um, before we actually get started, I want to give you a quick programming note. And I'll make sure to post reminders on Reddit as well. Um, there will not be any videos next week. Um, I'm going out of town. Um, I'm going to have my laptop, which can't really run the OTP games all that well. Um, and plus, I don't want to record OTV, um, when I could be enjoying my vacation instead. So, um, no videos Monday or Friday. Uh, we'll be right back the following week. It's only one week layoff. And, uh, we'll be back with, uh, early integration on Monday, April the 15th. Tax day for those in the United States, which you get your taxes done. And back with this on April the 19th. So. Uh, I'll post a reminder on Reddit. I'll probably even post one on Twitter. I don't use Twitter all that much anymore. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, that just means that there's amazing comments that y'all have, but we'll have a chance to see them. Speaking of comments, um, I talked about this at the Monday video, too. I assume most people watch both streams, but in case you don't, that's fun. I want to repeat what I said in the Monday stream because I think it's really relevant to this playthrough. There is presently a glitch in the game where draft classes are thoroughly underwhelming. There is a solution to this problem. That solution is called, what if you just start this series over again? Because if you do that, it fixes the draft class issue. And that is a really good point. Because right now, having the fourth overall pick isn't very good. We're basically getting an average player. Which isn't terribly interesting. Now, more players might declare for the draft. This is true. Um, and it might change things a little bit. But this is what we're looking at. And keep in mind, these are real college players right now. These are probably much better players in real life. Unfortunately, OTP hasn't released a fix where you can do it mid-season. You have to start a whole new franchise, and to be honest with you, I don't think it's worth it. Um, so we're just going to have to accept the fact that either our fourth overall pick isn't as valuable as we thought it was, or we'll have to hope that there's a couple more people that declare that are really special that might help us get some good players. Like, let me, let's just pick Alex Harrington at random here. This is not a bad baseball player. It's actually quite a good baseball player. He's just not what you think of when you think for his overall pick. Or fourth overall pick, for that matter. This is a very, very good infielder. Who happens to have a fairly high offensive ceiling. Uh, sorry, a fairly high offensive floor. I don't think he's going to win any batting titles. But he at least has one definitive offensive skill, which is drawing walks. That's always helpful. A perfectly cromulent player, one might say, but certainly not the kind of player that you're going to be excited about. Um, Brady Harris, again, very fine player, not necessarily amazing. Uh, this problem will go away when we get to 2029, I think. Because it's only the first four draft classes that are affected. Once the game starts making its own draft classes, when all the college players are out, then we're back. We're back to the normal thing. Uh, as far as that's concerned. I've also heard that international free agents are overpowered. Um, we certainly got a couple good ones last episode. but I mean, look... The key takeaway for us, and that's this is why I think this matters more than anything, is 
it's going to be a while before I can see us being truly competitive year in and year out. Because we don't have that extra layer, so to speak, of really good players. So this means that the rich are going to stay rich a little bit longer than they would normally. Conversely, however, we have to consider another op another item, which is every turn is going to be affected by this equally. There just aren't going to be amazing players in the draft, which means they're all going to have to build through other ways, which I find actually fairly compelling. Um, figuring out who the best international prospects are and the best ways to build your team in a logical way, I find really interesting and really fun. Um, so... Do we have it so that the AI is managing promotions and demotions? We do. Yeah. Also, I can override them if I want to. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. All right. Cool. Uh, so let's talk about what we think is going to happen this season. Um, we have a team of thoroughly competent professionals. That is the nicest thing I can say about this club. We have thoroughly competent professionals. Few of any of these players are game changers. Probably our first potential superstar, and good lord, does he have to hit. If Juan Carrasco develops what we think he might based on his scouting, he's going to be our franchise cornerstone. In a corner. I'm not going to put him in center, but regardless, he's got so much potential, but he is also very far away from the major league. Very, very far away. So. Um, we have really one special player, which is George Valera, as you can see here. Everybody else is in the bottom tier, besides Bo Naylor. <clears throat> so one of the first decisions I think we're going to have to make as a franchise is what to do with Abner Uribe. Trading is going to become absolutely crucial. Even more so than it usually is. Without trading effectively, I think we get stuck. And I think we death spiral. Because we don't have the draft coming to revitalize our minor league system. Smart trades, smart free agents, and not getting attached to players that don't have a lot to offer are just going to be essential for us to be a good team. Um, which means there are precisely two long-term keepers on this roster at the moment above average players that have a role to play going forward, George Valera and Abner Uribe. That's it. Everyone else is varying degrees of useful or valuable, but they're certainly not indispensable. So we're going to be fairly mercenary and churning through players until we do find those players that get us where we need to be. This is going to be a long uphill climb. Um, I don't anticipate us having a whole lot of success for at least four to five years. I, I just think that has to be set up. San Antonio Typhoon, yes, let's take a city in the middle of fucking Texas and claim that it's going to be visited by typhoons. There is quite literally nowhere in the United States probably less likely to be some typhoons. Oh, El Paso Mountaineers does track. Um, El Paso's got some lovely mountains in it. So it's called El Paso. It's the mountain pass, essentially. Anyways. Um, so yeah, this season might be another garbage tier season. I don't think there's a lot we can do about that. Um, it is what it is. Is there anybody want to try to sign before the season starts? I'm not one to com I'm not one to commit hardcore to Bo Naylor yet. Maybe, but for right now, I think it's going to take us some time. 
Remember that our park does favor home run hitters and it suppresses doubles doubles. So the gap power is going to be a little bit less valuable. And it's also a better park for lefties, a much better park for lefties. So we're going to want to target really good left-handed hitters to help us take the most out of our home park while reminding ourselves, of course, that half our games are not played in our home park. So we don't want to specialize too much. Um, Naylor is a decent extension candidate. Valera is a decent extension candidate. Um, but they're both going to be expensive, right? Like, they're both going to be really expensive. If we take a quick look here, if we ask him for a long-term contract, let's say for six years, that's not unreasonable. If I had a couple years of team options, but one of the things I keep falling into as a trap is I keep signing players when they've only provided one to two years of quality play. I need to see more out of him before I'm willing to commit that much money to him. We have money. Like, we are not a poor franchise. We started in a fairly decent market that we basically have to ourselves. Um, if you're having any problem in North Carolina, I suspect it's probably Braves country would be my guess. Um, or, you know, you're not that far away from Washington or Maryland, so I could soon see them being O's fans or Nats fans, but... My guess is most people are probably fans of the Braves. That's my guess anyway. Who knows if that's actually the, if that's actually the case. Um... I'm not bringing Luis Garcia back. Not unless he's able to take a pretty big pay cut. So we need to use the draft in a very interesting way. We're going to have to use the draft to build up our depth. That's, I think, where the draft can still be very helpful and very useful. Plus, always a chance that we get a, a talent change readiness, TCR, that just elevates somebody to the god tier. That is always a possibility, and so it's going to be really important to make sure we invest effectively in the team. Did I set... The roles here. I did. I would use a better base running teacher, but I can't use Wayner because that'll overtax him. And we'll need to get some better coaches too, for sure. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Let's also not forget the fact we're also in the AL East. This is a tough division, even under the best circumstances. So. That is a crucial element to our success or lack thereof in the future. And plus, they already have really good players and we don't. So, something worth considering. Eh. That's fine. Ooh, Joy S has a soaring harder. That's a lovely little bonus. I can get behind that. Um, while we play through, I want to talk a little bit about how they change player development this year, which I really enjoy. I want to see them take the next step. And here's what I think the next step is. There are certain teams who specialize in particular types of players. They build their entire philosophy around those kinds of players. And then that's what gets them where, where they may be successful or not so. But every team has the philosophy of certain kinds of players. Let me give you an example that I know well, which is, of course, the Guardians. The Guardians specialize in control pitchers to the add velocity to to make them really great pitchers. Uh, Corey Kluver, Shane Bieber off the top of my head. Uh, Cliff Lee. Uh, those of you that were big Cliff Lee fans for whatever team you followed him and know he never threw particularly hard. He threw harder because of his time in Cleveland. Um, that's a thing that the Guardians have always done. They're doing it now with, um, they did it with Gavin Williams and I think Tanner Bibby too. All this is to say, it is a organizational velocity that the Guardians specialize in and it's had great success for them. Their other more recent change is focusing on high contact, high on base players that don't have a ton of power. And that has made worked out a little bit less. But I want to see organizational philosophies like that included in this game that I think would really make each franchise feel different and it caused them to value players differently, which is always going to make things more interesting. That's my train of thought there.
Uh, Gabe Spire is going to get to come back. He's a really good reliever. I want him on this franchise. So who do we send out? It's going to be David Patterson. Or Peterson. I can't even get your name right. My apologies, but not really. There you go. We have an okay bullpen. It's not terribly thrilling, but we have an okay bullpen. Our rotation is kind of trashed here, though. Um, so we're definitely in the market for a starting pitcher at some point in the future. We're not scoring. Um, granted, minuscule slice this season. We can't really make any predictions based on... Um, based on what's happened so far. We just can't. Uh, okay. Draft pool revealed. Has it changed anything? Has it changed anything? It has. So there's now, at the tippy top, there's actually some really talented players. <clears throat> so there are basically... Four really good talents, or five really good talents, three of whom are elite. The problem is we're picking fourth, which means our chances of getting a Sam Connors, Chris Swisher, or Eric Lee are pretty low. Um, we're picking fifth. Fuck. I mean, I'm not opposed to getting any of those top players. Like Anybody that's green or higher is worth pursuing. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time breaking it down right now, but I will make sure that we get lots of scouting reports on 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Ah, eh, fuck it. Everyone who's green or above, we're going to get a scouting report on. I want to make sure that we are well informed before we make any decisions with our first pick. So we're going to request scouting reports on all 20 of them. Um... Okay. Uh, that's really good. I'm actually really appreciate that they did inject a little bit more talent into the draft. It means we have at least a chance of getting a top tier draft. That is unfortunate. Um, that's unfortunate for a number of reasons. The least of which is not the fact that we desperately need players that other teams will covet if we're going to have successful trades. He's the kind of player that other teams will covet. And now we don't have access to him anymore. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the waiver wire first. I just need a warm body right now. Love Lady isn't the worst choice. I want to check for agency before I commit to that. That's funny, Clayton Kershaw's still around. That's really funny. Um, relievers, please. I could add Taylor Rogers. I don't see any problem with that. Offer him a deal. I'm also going to talk to Hector Garcia Jr. No, I'm not. Oh, dear. Yeah, he's about to bottom out. Which reminds me, I don't actually want to be able to see that. That is under global settings, I do believe. Interesting. It's also cut off, but it isn't. That's weird. Anyways. Um, yes. Okay, Hubmacher is a reliever. We think his slider should be good, but his hustle looks kind of trashed here. I think he's a little bit better than that, but it's certainly not, not even in the ballpark of a top 10 pick. A thousand percent. Um, losing your rebate for four months is really bad because he's one of our most fungible assets. Um, mm.
I was thinking so true when I'm making the playoffs this season. I'm just putting that out there. Um, we're gonna be a really bad team. Uh, I just have to hope that our owner is reasonably okay with us having the slow part to the majors. Jim Little losing velocity really sucks. Um, I didn't want him to start aging this quickly, but I guess we all age whether we want to or not. Um, it's probably something deeply meaningful there, but hmm. All right. Asa Lacey's having... Oh, Asa Lacey's not on my team. That's an important distinction to be made there. We did get Taylor Rogers. We're going to go ahead and promote him to the big leagues. I should have done that earlier. My apologies. Oh, it's Josh Naylor. How dare you betray your brother like that, you jerk. All right. Deidre and Taps. We think he is an above average second league, uh, above average second baseman. I don't see it, and this is eh. his defense is underwhelming. He's got top tier power though, and that's going to be especially valuable to us as a franchise because of where Park is configured. <clears throat> He could be a really good up the middle player. Almost. That defense though. In an era where we don't have, where we have uh infield shifting being banned, athleticism is so much more critical than it used to be. Like it's always been important for a middle infielder. But it has to be a premium now. I don't know if that a low ranked second baseman is as valuable. It's a maybe. We'll put him in the maybe pile. Let me shortlist the players that I'm really interested in so that I don't forget about them. Yeah, Sam Connors is literally one of the most perfect prospects I've seen in this game in a long time, with a couple of caveats. He's kind of dumb. Uh, not great. And I don't think he's a shortstop either. He's... A reasonably good infielder. I think it's actually best as a third baseman, if I were to guess. Um, I mean, his raw ups, his raw talent is so incredibly valuable that he has to be on our list. Omari Blakes. Blakes is not terribly exciting. He's not unexciting. But he's already 18. And all of his skills are basically designed to be above average, which is great, which means he won't have an obvious flaw. But he also doesn't excel at anything. Which means if one or two of his skills develops in a different way than we expect, we're going to struggle. I'll still keep him on the short list. I'm not going to junk him entirely, but I'm less inclined to go after him. I like Chris Thomason a lot. I like him a lot. He is a no doubt shortstop. He'd be an amazing second baseman, but he's got really good he's got really good makeup. And he's got one elite offensive tier, two which is his power. Um Yeah, he could be a really good shortstop for a long time to come. He's a very tall but thin kid, which means there might be even more power to be had here. Yeah. I think Thomason is probably the most realistic choice of the players that are likely to fall to me. Jabari Apoku. A lefty. Okay. Not really a starter. He's got mm. Mm. that scroll down did change my opinion of him slightly. I'm a sucker for left use of the grid cutters. Um a lot of people the great cutter is such a weapon. Uh, when I used to play MLB The Show and High Heat and Triple Play when I was younger, um, 
I always got really excited whenever I saw a lefty with a good cutter because it's just such a filthy pitch. Um, you get that nice sharp cutter. Looks like it's going to be on this. Looks like it's going to be a strike and just dips out of the strike zone right on the hitter's hands. The best case scenario is he shatters his bat. I love a good cutter from a lefty. Um, this is not a bad pitcher. He's a ground ball specialist. He's got a nice mix of pitches. Mm. The stamina means he'll not, he isn't actually a starter, though. So we're looking at an elite reliever, not so much a good starter. I think we don't put him on a short list. Somebody else can, can try that one out. Mm, you're super dumb. Mm. Chris Wisher is the best hitter in this draft. He's an incredible athlete, and he is a dog shit defender. But he's really smart, has great makeup. Somebody will fall in love with Swisher, and that person will regret it. Because I don't think... Like, he's a first baseman. He's not a terrible infielder by any stretch of imagination, but I wouldn't want him playing the infield, other than a first base. He's really fast. Uh, he's a very he's an excellent athlete. I'll still shortlist him, but I would not take him. I don't think. Eric Lee. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe? I could see him working out. I'm very hesitant, though. Um, This velocity concerns me. It concerns me greatly. Because this means he's not going to strike as many people out. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it means... All of his other interior skills are going to have to develop. I think he could still be a front end of the rotation guy, but he won't get to strikeout numbers that'll make him seem truly elite. I will shortlist him all the same, though. Like, I think he is worthy of our consideration with the top pick if he falls to us, which I don't think he will. Mike Topper. Holy shit, is that a catcher? I would never take him with a top six pick because he is he is an all or nothing player. He is already right now an elite defensive catcher, which is incredible. Like this is a guy's gonna do multiple gold gloves. But his only offensive skill is power. The rest of his skill set is average to below average. Now if he is a great defensive catcher who hits 30 to 40 home runs a year, that could be something interesting. But the rest of his skill set, and especially his personality, gives me very strong concerns about taking him high. I'll still shortlist him. I want to see how he develops. Um, maybe it'll turn out that I'm wrong, but I don't think that I am wrong. Eh... I guess. Like, none of these starting pitchers leap out to me as saying, yes, this is the person you can anchor your franchise on. I mean, Bo Gruders has an amazing name. That's without question. I like his durability. He's had the best day in race art we've seen so far. And although he throws pretty soft, He's tall and thin. There is possibility here. He doesn't throw a straight fastball, which I think is actually in his favor. I mean, he's going to be very difficult to hit. Um, I have some interest in Mr. Gruders. Joe Hoy is not a center fielder. 
He's barely an outfielder. But he's also a nice all-around hitter who might compete for batting titles, but have enough power to make it work. I am reasonably pleased with a guy like Joe Hoy. He's not what I want, but I could see it working out. Interesting. I wonder if you caught what I caught instantly. This. Um, he is a reasonably accomplished athlete. He could be a two-way player. But he's not a star. These, the, the base pitching ratings are crap. He is really big and thin, which means there's a pretty good chance he'll add velocity, which I think he desperately needs to do. He's an interesting pitcher. He's an okay hitter. I'll shortlist him, but I would not take him with a first-round pick. I think he is a second-round pick, definitely, but not a first. Zach Stever. He's a good defender with a reasonable level of offensive skill. Possibly. I feel like I was settling if we got Stever, but I wouldn't object to having him if that's the best player left. Uh, no. Dan Curry is on my opposite shortlist. He's on my shortlist of people that I don't want anything to do with. Plus, he plays locally. Maybe he'll develop a little bit better, but no, Dan Curry is of no interest to me. I mean, interesting. His character ratings are off the fucking charts. That is extremely valuable. Even if, like, as a purely as a player, he's whatever. His care, his his makeup is off the chart. I think he could be a very good leader for the team, but I don't see him being a great player. Um, Juan Garola. Meh? I'm looking at him, and nothing about him strikes me as truly exceptional. He has one plus-plus pitch, which is his cutter. And I guess he has three other plus pitches. With the the greens here, because he's thinking blue is elite, green is pretty good, and then yellow is meh. I guess he's like he's above average at everything, but he's not exceptional at anything. Um, he's also kind of short, and I don't think he's gonna add a ton more velocity. But sure, I mean we're gonna need pitchers no matter what we do, so it's worth flagging a couple of them. Interesting. I like Mike Scruggs a fair bit. I like his stuff, which is unusual from a control from a ground ball pitcher. But I really like he has a plus plus pitch in the sinker and a plus cutter. He doesn't have a breaking pitch, but I don't think that's gonna hurt him as much. As they're just beating it into the ground. I really like Scruggs. He is my kind of pitcher. And Josh Beatty. As a left-handed starter, there's a lot to like here. But it's a maybe. It's a maybe for me, dog. I would draft him at the right circumstance, but I'm not going to take him anywhere near high. Yeah, Ignacio Lara is not that impressive, but here we are. Did I really look at these? I feel like I did. I did. All right. What Are we good at anything? We're not good at hitting, that's for sure. 
That's for sure. You know, so not good at pitching. Um, literally everything that could be going wrong about this team is going wrong right now. Which isn't that big a shock because we're like right there. We're very fast. I guess we can hang our hat on that. Okay, we gotta make some changes to at least give players opportunities. I've seen all I care to see from Kyle Schwarber. He's not doing it. Does somebody want him? Because I will happily find a replacement first baseman somewhere. I'll look at regulars too, but really I just want him gone. I just want an interesting player. That's all I'm asking for in exchange. It's just an interesting player. Wenzel Perez is a perfectly cromulent player. I think we can make that work. Yeah. Straight up, this is a good trade. We save a little bit of money, and Schwarber isn't that great. So I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, Let's try Rowdy Telez as our first baseman now. Or Alex Benilos, I guess, can get some playing time too. I don't really care how we do it it up, but that, that had to change. Next player I'm willing to get rid of is probably Gavin Lux. He is such a terrible hitter. He's a good second baseman, but he's already overpaid. And I kind of want to give a chance to Quintero. Like, if we compare Quintero and Lux, I think you'll be a little surprised with how similar they seem. Okay, offensively, Quintero is the superior player. Like, it's not even particularly close. Um, he's got more gap power, strikes out less frequently, hits for good contact, and he's very fast, which means he's going to be a weapon on the base pass, too. Defensively, Lux is clearly the better player. The question is, do we want to sacrifice... The other thing with Lux, though, is Lux is also quite expensive. Um, I mean, we could just also just give the other Brendan Donovan and let him try it out. That, I think, is even more worth, worthwhile. We have second base options, what I'm trying to get at here. And Gavin Lux just doesn't seem like a good one. I will add in veterans, because the right kind of veteran player might actually have a huge impact on this roster. Okay, mediocre reliever is not what I was looking for. Wow. I'm going to remove veterans. I think that means I get nobody. I will eat his salary. Uh, for one year, I will eat his salary for me to get a better player in exchange. Like, I don't even care. I've got plenty of money on my hands. I feel like Cabert Ruiz is silly. Like, he is not a starting catcher for us, not with Bo Naylor on the team, so I don't see why I would get too hot and bothered about that. I've got a ton of outfielders that have mediocre talents. I mean, Matt Koperniak is not a center fielder. He's fine, I guess. Like, I don't want to get rid of Gavin Lux just to get rid of Gavin Lux. I want to get something reasonable in exchange for him. I guess. None of these players are particularly compelling. Um...
Maybe Aaron Ashby, I wouldn't object to having another quality pitcher in the rotation. And just getting him out of Colorado is probably going to do him the world of good. What if I don't need his salary at all? Victor Reese Virginia is really good defensively. That gives him a little bit more value than some other people I can name. I do want to keep Abbott. I do want to keep Abbott. Because he's young, and he's a fairly good pitcher, and those are both good things to have. I could give you Wickleman, Wickleman Gonzalez. I don't have a problem with that. I bet you should eat some of his salary. If you eat half of his salary, that makes us an even better deal. Just submit the offer. And he'll take it, so I will complete the trade. Look, Ashley gives us a genuinely good starting pitcher. That's cost controlled. And yeah. And this then gives us the opportunity to test out some new second baseman. I feel pretty happy about that. Actually, Otto Lopez is an even better hitter. Yeah, we'll call up Otto Lopez instead. Um, that's fine. Uh, who else is maybe going to get replaced? I'm not going to give up on Josh showing after he was so good last year. I think he just maybe needs a little bit of time to get hot. So I'm, I'm going to, we're going to stick with Young at least for the rest of, up to the trading deadline. Valero will be fun. Tasker Hernandez is looking brilliant already. Um, and I've got him super cheap, so if he has a great season, he becomes a really valuable trade piece. Ben Attendee is uninteresting. He's not getting on base, which is kind of what I have him for. I'll give him a little bit more time, but I have so many outfielders that I think even like giving Victor Mesa Jr. the job is a reasonable choice. We shall see, amigos. Michael Garcia hitting well, though, is pretty nice. I'm not going to argue with that at all. Um, He's always going to be some susceptible to the vagaries of where the ball bounces, but other than that, he is a pretty accomplished player, and I think he's a fine addition to our team. Yeah. I know Ashley is a little prone to walks. I'm That is not lost on me, but the rest of his skills are... He's got several plus-plus pitches and a slider curveball and a sinker. Donut pitches are bad. He's got decent velocity for a lefty. I think he's a good fit. Plus, I'm not even paying his whole salary. Thanks, Colorado. Um, yeah, those has had to be made, and I think it made us a better team. Um, and it's opened up opportunities for youngsters to to show what they can accomplish. Let's check Myers for three weeks. Um, that is less than ideal. Who's our next man up in the outfield that can handle center potentially? 
Stephen Kwan, I think, gets a roster spot. He can handle center if we need him to. Oh my gosh, what I completely forgot to. I've not signed any of our. Oh, Jack hasn't happened yet. Okay. Ooh, I thought I didn't sign anybody. How are we just getting raffle stomped at every opportunity? I guess they haven't fixed that. Like, it isn't obvious to me at all why we're just getting destroyed in every league across the board. Well, because other teams have genuine Mike Julie talent, I guess is fair. I think free agency is going to be absolutely critical for us to ever develop as a good franchise. You need to get decent bargains. You are a starter, aren't you? Are we literally not starting Rowdy Telez? Who the fuck is playing for this? Alex Benilas? I mean, we'll try it, but I think Telez would be a far better choice. Yeah, literally the only thing Benilis is better at is playing defense. Like, I don't care if I have a gold glove caliber defensive first baseman. That just seems so ridiculous to me. But to not play Telez at all, I think is silly. So we're going to give him what he wants because it's better for the team. Play him at first base, you fuckers. Like, Teles isn't maybe the greatest first baseman in history, but he's a far more accomplished all-around hitter than Benilis is. So, don't get fucking weird, game. Oh, uh, you will offer me Ernesto Talker, who is not terribly fascinating. Chris Maldonado is fine, I suppose. What am I giving up? No, that can't change your mind. This is genuinely a bad deal. It's it's turning two fairly accomplished infielders into less. Um Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Thank you for the offer, Tigers, but I must politely decline. Valera, would you fucking quit? Oh my god, quit having teams destroy us. I know they just have more talent than we do, but still, it's still depressing. What are our token all-stars going to be this year? Probably Teoscar Hernandez would be my guess, if I were to guess, but... Um, how is Mr. Kwan performing in the majors? Not great. I think we're going to get rid of Benilis. I just don't think he serves a role on the team. He's got okay pop, but that's literally his entire offensive skill set. And the game's clearly going to play him because they think he's this glove wizard at first base, which is just not valuable to me. Let's go ahead and return him to the Red Sox. Bye-bye. Here we'll bring Myers back. And we'll just let Telez play first base for the rest of the season. Do we have any players right now that seem like really obvious trade candidates?
I could give to Laz a small extension if he's willing to take a small one. I just want to, I want a decent bat that I can trust without paying him too much money. I think this is perfectly fine. Let's do it. A couple more years at reasonably small prices make him a pretty good candidate to keep around. And our house sucks. Um, at least this year he sucks. Maybe he will suck less, given the opportunity. But yeah, he's a little bit overpaid. Um, how are we looking? Not great. Um, we're bottom of the basement and newly every offensive stat. Oh, George Valera is suspended. That's right. Garcia's still okay, and so is Hernandez, but that's literally it. We have a bunch of people that are battling, batting way below the Mendoza line, which is not ideal. Yeah. Who's my current hitting coach? Jason Young is theoretically a good coach. I think we just have nothing for him to work with. I can't fix this lineup. Um, Lucas Giolito. He's not even eating innings. So trading him makes a little bit of sense. Let's see if we can flip him for something interesting. I can trade him for Jordan Hicks. That seems incredibly silly. Jordan Hicks is a little better than he is, but now that doesn't make any sense. Um, We'll keep going for right now and just... Buffer, I guess. Because the thing is, like, as a team, we're not hitting very well. Like, I don't know how to fix that. Um, I just think we don't have good enough players. So that is a problem we're going to be facing, I think, for a while. Uh, losing Alfonso isn't ideal. Uh, who do we have that's a reasonably decent catcher? And I think Stevie Berman can handle being a backup catcher for a short time. We'll do that. Um. I genuinely don't know who our all-star will be. I know we'll have one, thankfully, but I, I don't know who it is. The road to a relevant lineup is just so long for us. I don't hate Yvonne Melendez. But I'm not giving you a potentially good hitter in exchange for that. If I drop him... Well, you'll do Ben Attendi for Melendez straight up? Done. Like, that is a no-brainer. And we can chuck him on the roster, and we can figure out what to do with him. Yeah, done. That doesn't mean Stephen Kwan plays left field every day, which may not be a great fit for us either, but, like, that was an easy choice. Like, Ben Attendi was never going to stay on the team, and at least this other guy might have a chance to do it. Potentially. I think I should have traded Josh Young last season. All right. Um, let's look at our pitching coaches. Let's look at our coaches down the line here. Johnny Weaver is terrible. 
I bet they all suck. So I think we're just going to let everybody walk, and we'll just spend the first part of the next episode maybe just rebuilding our coaching franchise because our coaches are all bad. Like, they're all really, really bad coaches, so I think we just deal with that and go from there. Because I want to get that really good coaching core in the minor leagues that we can then turn into great major league coaches. Thank goodness for Juan Carrasco. Has he gotten any better? Has he capitalized at all on his development? Slightly. He's not getting worse, um, which is greatly appreciated. We're getting worse, but uh, the Marlins are still as bad as we are, so I guess I have that. Damn jaw, damn Bruce Zimmerman, well done. Um, we're just bad at everything. Um, I think that's a better way to put it. Like, I don't know where else is going to be. Maybe like Michael Garcia by default, because he's the only part that's not like completely awful. Yeah, Giolito's using even more velocity. I didn't train for literally anything. Uh, because he's just gonna get worse. Like, even as a mediocre reliever, he's terrible. I will pay his entire salary if I get something of interest from you. I mean, Brian Abreu is, would be a pretty big upgrade in our bullpen. No, Solaire is a terrible fit for the club. Brian Anderson is a nifty little player. I could see that maybe working out for us. There are some genuinely good options being offered to me. Um, let's see. Tristan Beck is a pretty solid starting pitcher. He's not terribly thrilling. But he's better than Giolito, that's for sure. If I ask for a package of prospects... What is that going to get me? Yeah, I'm having to turn in good players to get even mediocre prospects. This is terrible. No, we're not going to do that. Is there any team with two interesting players on it? Where I can try to get both of them. I like Brian Anderson because he's a really solid all-around player. But I don't necessarily covet him to the point where I'm going to go out of my way to grab both of them. Hmm. 
I don't add too much salary. Otherwise, Berrios is reasonably interesting. I want somebody I'm going to be able to keep around for a little bit. I think that's probably number one in my calculus, is somebody that's going to be around for at least a little while. Um... Yeah, I don't want Anthony Rendon. That's ridiculous. Eh. Eh. Like, Brian Abreu instantly upgrades our bullpen. And I think he himself could be a reasonably valuable... But it says Abreu is ready for arbitration. Is he going to get arbitration or is he going to be a free agent? No, he's going to be a free agent, so that's stupid. That's really stupid. Um, I'm not going to do that. Matthew Boyd is a really good pitcher and could even be a starter again. I think Boyd is actually our choice. Wow, you really like uh, Matthew Boyd. Or do you like G Giolito Dunn? And then we'll figure out what to do with... I'll let the manager go to his avoid whether he's just a really good reliever or we put him back in the rotation. Plus, the fact he's older means he might be willing to take a smaller salary if we decide to keep him around. Hmm... I will consider it later on. For right now, though, I don't think so. I don't believe so. Like, our costs are going to go up anyway because of our arbitration. And we're going to have to make some difficult decisions. Um, yeah. See you later, Berman. It was nice having you. We need like a Rodolfo Romero kind of prospect where they're fairly young and we just throw them a boatload of money and they transform our franchise. Um, Who from the Silver Wolves got to go to the All-Star game? Brendan Donovan. Interesting. If you had said Abby at the beginning of the season, Graham Ashcraft and Brendan Donovan are going to be your, your people, I would not have believed you. Brendan Donovan is in a rare bright spot at second base. I definitely think keeping him around was a good decision. And I think he's already performing, proving, proving to be an excellent player. Do any all-star prospects? Jesus Barreras with his minus three war. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his development is pretty much fucked at this point because he's just getting destroyed every time he comes out. How to change of setting? Uh, I think it's under players rules. Yeah, let's set it on current ratings. Let's 
Yeah, that's probably better. Uh, maybe we won't have quite as many issues. Uh, let's go right up to the draft. Really, Otto Lopez, really. Uh, King Tarot gets called up. You don't get hurt. Oh, you just it's a little back soreness. That's fair. Oh, could be trading players for bonus pool room. I didn't think of that. That's not a terrible idea. Um, okay. Yohendrik Pingano or Pinongo is uninteresting. He's an okay hitter. He's fine, I guess. Matt Ager isn't terribly thrilling. I know they're not giving up Arturo Montes. Like, he actually has a chance to maybe be acceptable. All right, let's go ahead and get drafting. In a perfect world, if I could pick any one single player in this draft to turn our team around, it would probably be Sam Connors. I think Connors has the most upside while still being a pretty useful defensive player. But we're going to see who's available. We're going to see, and then we'll make our choice from there. So. I like Taps' bat. That's about all I have that's nice to say about him. I can't risk Topper. I can't. His offensive skill set is so limited that... I just don't trust him. Gruders is fine, but not... Gruders is decent. I could maybe take Gruders. I'd like to get a hitter, though. I'd like to get a hitter. I think it's going to be Thomason. Yeah, that's who we're going to take. We're going to take Chris Thomason. I will give him his demand, because I got plenty of fucking money. I genuinely hope that Thomason might fall to the second round. I thought there was at least a reasonable chance that might happen. Alas, we are not so fortunate. Who did end up taking Topper, I wonder? <sighs> right after me. Hmm. All right, um, so there's a few 50s left in this draft, which is very important. What are we looking at with Jeff Moore? Jeff Moore is a good all-around hitter. Well, he's not a good all-around hitter. He's an okay all-around hitter with better-than-average power. And everyone else in this range is a pitcher. So if I want to keep my offense improving, Jeff Moore kind of has to be the choice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll take Jeff Moore and give him his bonus demand. Interesting. Andy Peters keeps falling. Why? I genuinely don't know why. He's got outstanding stuff. Good control, an amazing change of vassal combination. What do other teams see in him that we do not? I 
I'm gonna take him. Like, I'm not gonna look the gift horse in the mouth. I'm gonna draft the shit out of him. Uh, we're not gonna- I'm not gonna pay Dan Curry a giant sack of cash. I don't believe in that. Jameer Jemerson. Decent power. Okay all-around offensive skills. Very smart. He's a third baseman, but I can always use more third base talent. I think Mr. Jemerson can join us. Plus, he's willing to... Oh, he wants overslot. Why do you lie to me, game? You tell me he just wants the slot, but now I tell you his bonus man is $3 million. That's ridiculous, but I'll do it anyway. This is a red flag, but we're only talking a fifth round pick. I can spend a fifth round pick on a pitcher that might end up being pretty decent, even if he does end up getting hurt. What the fuck is this shit? The moment I draft them, they instantly want these giant bonuses. Fuck off, man. I will draft you, but I ain't paying you that much money. Don't be ridiculous. Eh. Meh? Andrew Cribs is deeply uninteresting. I'll still take him just because he gives us options in the minor leagues, but I don't think we have a whole lot of upside there. Yeah, none of the rest of you guys are that interesting. I mean, Ethan Bass is a pretty talented defender. I could take Ethan Bass. He seems a bit fishy to me, but... And let's just go ahead and let our scouting director pick the rest of the draft. Paying way over slot for a pitcher that's already got an injury history just seems like a bad decision. But he's like an okay hitter, I guess. That's not nothing, but it's not something either. <clears throat> Look, we're talking a mid-tier starting pitcher. I just don't have anything better to spend the money on, though. Like, I have $44 million, so I guess I'll pay his demand. That feels gross, though. That feels like such an overpay. Hmm. Don't know why you're complaining about not starting. Are you not starting? No, we're playing Stephen Kwan over you. And Melendez is the DH. I mean... I guess... I kind of wanted to keep you. But if somebody is willing to pay, I'm going to wait till the deadline to trade you, but I will trade you if you really want to be out of here. Because I don't blame anybody being annoyed at being, like, completely screwed. Thanks, Matt Boyd. Awesome job. I'm amazing. Oh, you want to raise? I don't think so, shithead. You just got hurt. I would be willing to bring you back at a reduced salary, but not as, not at a higher one. Zimmerman can save the day, I guess, for a given value of save and day. Um, yeah, I'm disappointed too.
Well, that's King Charles been destroying baseballs left and right. I like Lopez better. I think he just gives us more flexibility. The Mets want to give me Rogelio Romo. Maybe. I think it's Max McGuire sucks. And I'm giving you... Like, Taylor Rogers isn't going to be here next year. Quintero at least has the potential to be interesting. I would do Rogers for Romo. That is a trade that I would make. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I don't believe in Romo that much. Or do, oh, he's a starter. Decent stuff in control. But my problem is... He's going to give up homers. And we have a park that's prone to that. I don't think he's a good fit. Not for what you're going to be asking for. So I'm going to have to politely decline. All right, Cooper Kenny is a legitimately interesting prospect. He's got nice all-around offensive tools. He can catch, which is always useful, even if he's not great at it. Iriarte is better than he looks. I think he's underrated given his actual skill level. I think he could actually be a pretty decent relief pitcher. Leonardo Pineda is a really good defensive center fielder. It's he's he's far away from being a good hitter though. But you want Barreras, my one good pitching prospect. What if I drop Barreras? And what if I pay his salary for the rest of the season? No, it's actually, in fact, not within reach. Let me drop Pineda, or do I drop Kinney? Or just Iriarte? No, I want to keep Iriarte, because I turn him into a reliever. He's going to be something really crazy. So I'm going to drop Pineda. What if I just did it for Iriarte? Done. Because watch this shit. Where is Iriarte right now? Yeah, you're going right to the major leagues. It doesn't necessarily seem like it, but an elite stuff pitcher is always going to get lots of work. And I think he could be a really good one. Look at those pitches. Those are all sexy. This is a good relief pitcher. Far better than keeping Taylor Rogers, who I think was never going to be a terribly big part of this team going forward. Plus he's cost controlled. We got to sell our lottery tickets while I still have value. Um, yes. I agree. There's everything to like about this trade. I mean, I guess I could get greedy and try to get somebody else in there, but... Hmm. 
Okay. I had to try. I had to try. Get to Frank Orozco. He'd be a pretty good player, but I think we're gonna just yeah. There's really no downside for this offer. There really isn't. There truly, truly is not. Um could I get Sus Pedas? That be possible? No. You know what? This is just a better deal. Mitch Keller is a really good pitcher with a lot of durability. And I bet I can probably get him to sign for a decent contract. So yeah. Uh, you do not anymore. This is literally what you just offered me. So we're just going to accept it here. That was a good deal. That was a very good deal. And before I sign Mitch Keller, I'm going to offer him a long-term contract. Oh, he wants a giant new contract. <clears> hmm. <throat> uh, that's not happening. You can go to triple A. Oh, I guess you do have to be in the 40 man. Okay. I sent you to triple A. Mitch Keller is quite good. Give me a team option, and I will make this trade. I know that's a lot of money for a pitcher that's not that special, but I think he is good enough. Um, and I would like to have a, a, a higher tier pitcher available for us. Um, if such a thing were to be permitted. I mean, Kevin Giles would be a pretty nice pitcher, but I'm not paying that much money. You really want to get my attention, you're going to start offering players in their 20s. I think that's important. Michael King is a reliever at this point in his career. I mean, Cody Bellinger would give us a reasonable amount of instant credibility, but I don't think it's worth it. I genuinely don't think it's worth it. Oh, let's skip to the next sim and see if we get offered anything. Is there anybody else here that I want to potentially trade? I need lottery tickets. Boyd is gone. Enoa's gone. Garcia's gone. Like, none of those guys are coming back no matter what happens. Uh, I will trade Jeremiah Jackson just because I'm going to lose him anyway if I don't put him on the 40 man. And while I think he's an okay hitter, I don't think he's a good defender. What do the people want for Jeremiah Jackson? And I do want specifically a prospect or a good regular. I don't want to take on salary for him. Hmm. Hunter Owens got himself a lot of power. Let's go for Derek Hill. I think he's actually a pretty well-rounded player. His offense upside isn't super high, but he's really good defensively. I think I like him quite a bit. Let's get Derek Hill. And then he goes on the 39-man or the 40-man roster. And I probably put him on the roster, actually. I have too many pitchers, don't I? Iriarte, kindly go to the minor leagues, please. Or no, Zimmerman can go to the minor leagues. That's fine. 
and then we can put Derek Hill on the roster. All right. Um, anybody else whose contract is coming up that I could flip for an okay profit? I'm glad I didn't offer him a giant contract. I mean, part of the issue has just been hurt this year. Um, but yeah. All right. I don't think there's anybody else that I could maybe... I could maybe say treating Josh Young, but I think people are going to forget the fact he had 35 home runs last year. And I probably won't get a very good return for him. But we can try it. Um, we can absolutely give it a shot. God, nobody is hitting at all this season. Like, even a little bit. That's really gross. Um, I mean, I could get a really good young reliever. That seems like a pretty terrible return, though. Plus, Nelson's not that great. He's fine, but... Yeah, I think... Look, I, if someone wants to make me an offer, I'll listen. But... Yeah, I just don't think we have anything that's interesting. And you're not offering anything that's got... A, I mean, Alejandro Kirk is pretty good. Um, but I don't think he's worth what the Reds probably want for him, so I'm just going to end the trade deadline. I see no reason to delay when I'm not going to get any other trades. Paying Mitch Keller that much money might be a mistake, but I do think he's one of our better starting pitchers. And I do want to have some continuity in the rotation um, in the long term. Uh, we're still like a dead last in offense. We're not scoring runs. Our pitching is getting better, though. Like Our pitching is slowly improving, which is not bad. Um, let us advance up to the beloved roster extension. Okay. Thankfully, we only got him locked up for two years. And I do genuinely think he's going to be a pretty good pitcher for those two years. Um, because the thing is, unlike position players, where you might find, say, a really good hitter that doesn't have a DF50 defense position that you can get for pretty cheap, that doesn't happen with starting pitchers, at least on my experience. You don't find top-tier starting pitchers like that. Um, Abner Uribe is going to go into rehab assignment, but... He has to have a good rest of his season. He has to be an extremely sexy prospect so that we can flip him um, for a decent prospect package or just adding on some really good regulars would be pretty nice. Because they absolutely cannot overpay for a bullpen. Um, that would be death for this team. I'll pay for things that are need to be paid for, but I'm certainly not going to just pay someone just for the sake of paying them. Can we avoid 90 losses this year? I doubt it.
Um, okay, player development, nothing too wild. Hmm. And Sabato's having a pretty good year in the minors. That's cool. Well, I hope George Fuller does finish the year on a relative high note because he is right now the only position player I have that's above average. Potentially even a star. If we look at our team chemistry, it's probably not super great. It's reasonably okay. Oh, damn, Stephen Kwan is actually a leader. That's good to know. It's really good to know. We actually have a really good group of players in terms of leadership, which is nice to see. All right, Abner Uribe, welcome back. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. I mean, anybody's going to claim Stevie Berman if I try to sneak him through waivers, right? Like, that seems unlikely. And then uh, maybe Aaron Sabato can get some at-bats. Or maybe Mason... Let's get Mason Black up. I wouldn't mind seeing him get some, some pitching performances in. And Roddy Tellez has lost his ability to hit for contact. That's not something he could have afforded to, loss, to lose. That was the one thing that made him actually a decent upside pick, and that's not happening this year. Just kind of gross. Let's just end our suffering. Um, Not right here, Tom. I do, do I? Oh, he cleared waivers. Great. Yartag, you dumb son of a bitch. Oh, damn. That sounds awful. I haven't even heard of that before. That sounds rough. Sorry, brother. Um, Wenzel Perez. I guess you're returning Wenzel. You came. I'm just going to put on the 60-man IL because I want the opening on the roster. And then that way we can bring him up. And my amazing pun isn't wasted. That's a shame. Brendan Donovan has actually been a pretty good player this year. Um, I think a demon is like when you get like a bubble uh, in your blood or whatever. But I'm not that kind of doctor, so... You know, we didn't lose 100 games. Just, oh, we still could. I've cursed it now. Come on, beat Tampa. No, we lost 100. God damn it. I'm not surprised at all. Like, this is not a good team. Um, damn. I mean, the Yankees didn't make the postseason, so that makes me happy. Not these guys. Uh, David Madrano isn't terrible, actually. He's not great, but he's not terrible either.
I've never heard of any of them. Not even the legendary Jojo Booker. Um, wow, Julio Rodriguez is pretty good. Um, he's at 11. Wish I had a Julio Rodriguez. Oh boy, he's finally back. Man, fuck off all that bullshit. I would sign you for the league minimum, but not a penny more. Um, so yeah, you can get fucked, nerd. Oh, that's good. He'll be back soon. That's pretty cool. Can I just cut him? Because he's going to be free agent anyway. Like, I have no compulsion to keep him around. Gone. I'll give, let him hit free agency a little bit earlier. That's the kind of general one. That's the kind of general manager I am. Like, you know what, buddy? You want a little bit more time on the market? Have at it. Because I don't give a fuck. All right, I'm going to scout. They have fixed this. You see like 10 80s in every class. They're still really good players, though. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I mean, Horst Van Danebulger is a pretty amazing name. I'm not going to lie. But I do think we probably need a little bit more than just an incredible name to decide to... Um, do the thing. Scooting international run practice. The Padres and the Mariners. Interesting. Two West Coast teams. First championships in their history. Mariners are victorious. Congratulations, Seattle. Well done. I wonder how many hitters are actually above replacement level. It can't be very many of them. Um, I did find a top prospect. You say I can do better. I'm not convinced, but maybe. Um, let's, before anything else, I want to save the game. Um, I've had an issue the last couple times when I've tried to close out of the game. It isn't saving it. It just crashes. Uh, very minor bug. Just make sure you save before you quit out. Um, and you'll be okay. And they might have already fixed it already anyway. I get to get a lot of new coaches, which I'm perfectly happy about, and we'll do that next episode. Um... 100 losses, gross. Can we post anybody interesting? No. They literally posted nobody interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got an extension, which frankly was kind of surprising to me, but I'm here for it. Where are we at minor leagues? We're number nine. Thomason ranks 37th. Major League debut, not terribly sexy, but that's okay. He went straight to A-ball, which is pretty impressive. It's just going to take him some time to get acclimated, but he could be a really special player. I've got a lot of hopes for him. Uh, that's for certain. I'll leave us in California. Hmm. All right, teams, pals, amigos. 
let's let, let's let's get it over with. Let's get the pain over with. We had four players who were above replacement level. Well, a winner more above replacement level. That's what we call not great. Uh, Michael Garcia, Steven Kwan, Jake Myers all got there mostly because of their defense. And then George Fuller was our one like decent tier bat. In terms of pure offensive production, like Wenzel Perez is pretty good in limited time. Telez wasn't bad, but this is not a good team. Point blank, not a good team. Mitch Keller had a pretty good year, but I think it's important not to overstate what he did for us. A lot of those with Kansas City. But he's still a good pitcher. Like, he's still a nice piece. Ashby and Hauk were okay. Some decent from Leaf performances. Ariarte sucked. Yeah. We were not good this year. Our pitching was decent. This pitching staff isn't entirely hopeless, but the lineup kind of is. And seeing Bo Naylor so far below what we need him to be is really disappointing. We've got a bunch of hitters that if they hit 250 would be all-stars, but they refuse to hit 200. And I think that's one of our biggest challenges. Uh, Stephen Kwan was a nifty little player that I'll happily keep for another year and see what he can do with a second year. Michael Garcia started off hot, but then really cooled off. Still better than last year, but not by a huge amount. Eh. I'm going to cut, I'm going to remove uh, Matthew Boyd as well, since he's already, yeah, there we go. I'm sorry you're upset about that, but you should try not being hurt. Um, yeah. We need everything. Um, I am okay with Roddy Telez, Michael Garcia, and George Valera. Valera is the only player that I think really shit the bed this season and could have been a lot better. Um, but he's already starting to lose some of his abilities. Because his power used to be in the 60s for potential, and he's Topped out at 55, so. It's kind of a brutal season. We will figure it out, but we definitely got to get some better players. That is a guarantee. We must find good, capable hitters. Whether that's through the draft, whether that's just through... Well, Andy Pierce wrote a 73. I got him in the third round. That's amazing. Oh, because you turned him into a reliever. I mean, do what you got to do, man. Juan Carrasco. Oh, they promoted him. Interesting. He's now an A-ball as well. Man, if we can start getting a good performance out of him next year... This could be our secret weapon. This could be the core of our team for decades to come. If. So overall, how was our transactions this season? Um, Gavin Lux is pretty terrible, I gotta say. Like, I think overall, we've made... We're, we're a better team than we are a bad team. And a lot of these... A lot of these that look like bad trades are because the players haven't actually hit the major leagues yet, so they might turn out to be decent trades in the long run. Um, but John Gray wasn't going to stick around. Lost 2.6 war. Who's been, so, who's been all that great? Easton McGee? Easton McGee had a pretty good season this year. In AAA. 
Oh, Nassim Nunez actually cracked the Major League roster soon, actually played fairly effectively. Mm. And then, of course, the fact that Gavin, Gavin Lux was below replacement level certainly didn't help. That's the 2.6 comes from. It's one war from Nunez and minus 1.6 from Lux. Lux is just a bad player. Um... I have a lot of outfielders that are all about the same talent level. That is probably something we need to address here in the offseason. But where is Rocaforte? I thought he was still with the team. Oh, I traded him. For Umberto Lara. Wait, what? Oh, he was part of the Bo Naylor trade. Yeah, that one's not looking so great. It might at some point, but for right now, it doesn't look great. We need more contact hitters. We need hitters that can reliably hit the ball, put it into play, and see what happens. Which right now, we do not have. Take a look at our batting ratings. We'll look up our contact hitters. We have some decent contact hitters, but two of them aren't even regulars. Like, Otto Lopez might low-key be a pretty decent player if given the opportunity. But I think Brendan Donovan is just better. Uh, we shouldn't miss Brendan Donovan. We actually had a pretty good year, too. It's, it's not his fault he ended up being injured at the end of it. Like, he was worth almost a win. So that's fun. Oh, he's a terrible second baseman because his range is pretty piss poor. Uh, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. Not a lot of Not a lot of materials with which to do it, either. I can't trade Uribe now. We have to give him one more year. Because right now his value could not be lower. It could not be lower. If we bring him back and he has a healthy season and pitches well, then we can flip him at the deadline for a lot more. Trading him now will be trading him at the very nadir of his value, and I'm not going to do that. Um. Other than that, This is a team that could definitely get better. Definitely get better. Aaron Ashby is not too bad. Our rotation isn't great, and I don't expect to do great things in a in a um, what you call it, in the playoffs if we ever made the playoffs. But it's really solid, and we don't have a real weak link in the rotation. Maybe Bailey over. He's not been super impressive, but what he does throw is throw strikes effect is extremely well. The home runs got to go away. Like that's always going to be a struggle for this for these teams. We're going to want to make sure we get lots of high movement guys to make sure they can be as successful as possible. Uh, that is probably our big. That's going to be one of our biggest weaknesses as a franchise, just because of where we're pitching. Andrew Rabbit's season wasn't great, but you know. We've got to prize high movement guys that keep the ball in the park. And I think that's going to be a crucial piece to our success as a franchise. Um, yeah. It's hard to say much more than when it comes to this season, but maybe it'll get better. I don't know. What do they announce the draft lottery? Like, right now, I'm second, but I don't know what it's going to look like once the lottery happens. All right, amigos, thank you very much for watching. Uh, one last reminder, no new videos next week um, while I'm on vacation, but I will be back and have new videos for you when I return. Thank you very much for watching. Your viewership's always appreciated. If you haven't joined the subreddit and you want to talk about things, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, like and subscribe, comment down below, etc. etc. Until next time, my friends, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching. And I bid you.